In today's video, I will be showing you how to get an ISS like structure in the orbit of Duna. So, let's get right into it. I will be showing you how to design the aforementioned station, including all the necessary components, assembly, preparing how the final look should look like. Followed by the main assembly, putting it into a fairing and strapping it to the giant booster that will hopefully take it to the aforementioned planet. Launching it on top of the aforementioned booster with all the shenanigans attached to it. Huge fairing, huge rock, there we go, looks perfect, alright. Then I will be showing you the departure of the aforementioned station from our home planet and the arrival to the destination, including the orbital insertion burn. But let's get right into the meat of things. Okay, so first of all things, we want to be designing the main body of it. We'll start with a Coppola module, followed by some reaction wheels and batteries, because of course it needs some, you know, power and uh, stability assists, that's kind of important. Then we're gonna attach a lab efficacy, then we're followed it by we'll attach another hitchhiker storage container. <coughs> yes, this one will be housing a lot of people. So, now I want to be doing is to find the Rocomax adapter, where where is one when you need one? Uh, okay, let's go do it this way. There we go. Then we want to put the station core, then this back, and we're going to build it symmetrical, so everything else that was attached to it is going to be added to the other side, so to say. So, yeah, there we go. Alright, I'm going to put one more RCS tank, because those will give me additional stability. So, let's see, hitchhiker module, then we had a lab, then we had how many? Three, I believe, batteries. Where are the batteries? There we go. One, two, three. Maybe I do four. Yeah. SAS module. There we go. Just to make sure that it's asymmetrical. It's gonna be beautiful. All right. <clears throat> so that's the main body of the thing. Now I want to be attaching the docking ports, which will be d done for you know docking, redocking, undocking, and all that jazz to attach the modules. So I'm gonna place it on all four sides. And immediately, since I'm gonna be, uh, the idea is that you construct the final vessel and then you figure out how you're gonna, you know, decouple it into transferable modules and get it to the surface, or sorry, to the orbit of two. Now, let's see, I was thinking first to go with this, but that wouldn't really look like an ISS now, would it? So I was thinking something like that, then again, maybe not. This is design is loosely inspired by the International Space Station, but it's not gonna be one for one replica, so don't count with it. However, let's see what we do. We, we, we got this one, then we're gonna be building another structure. Yep, something along these lines. I'm thinking of placing two other modules that will be left and right. There we go, let's place this one, this one, there we go, looks good. Then we're gonna be putting clampotrons, one, two, three, four, okay, other sides. We want to place them on every single module that is not currently occupied because that will give us room for further expansion down the line. All right. Right, so let's see, we've got this, rotate on this side, on this side, are we covered? Yeah, and this is more or less what I would like the structure to lie, to look like, but I'm actually thinking I want to place our famous, you know, the Coppola module, that's famous on the, on the International Station. So let's see, uh, do I have any good adapters or something that I want to be placing there? Something like that, nope. Never mind, I'll just attach it like this. Looks dope. All right, so now we want to break this into transferable modules because this thing needs to get to orbit and then to space. So let's put on each of the modules that will be attached and reattached. We're gonna put an SAS. Oh, we need to put the radiators in. I think I'm gonna go with the small ones despite the fact, so yeah. I'm trying to go get as much stock-like stock look as possible. There we go then I would need probably some gigantor solar panels. 
and I'm gonna place them here-ish. Well, technically on the real ISS they're not here, they're a little bit further out and extruded on the trusses that are outside, so maybe I actually, hold on, I was missing here a tank, yeah, tank I could use, okay. I mean, if the crop docks, so we wanted to be able to, you know, re-tank re or so to say. Alright, let's see, another tank here, okay, that actually makes it now similar. Now, when I look in the post-production, I see that I have one more battery on the right-hand side compared to the left one, and it's bugging me to no avail. <laughs> oh well, okay. Relay, of course, that's important. Uh, we need another antenna here. Alright, with that thing being put here, I want to make sure that I decouple... Can I rotate this? I cannot rotate. It's only when it's being, uh, you know, in flight I can rotate. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> Then let's see what do we do. Uh, I'm gonna rotate this so that the door is overlooking the long side, which makes sense because if you do want to do maintenance, then we put these big trusses and here on the big truss I'm gonna be placing the solar panels so when they get extended they look actually kind of nice. Good. This side as well. Alright, that will now I have probably just complicated my ascent, but uh, yeah, we're gonna jump to that problem when we land there. Alright, fair enough. Now I want to be putting something that will allow these panels to rotate, like this huge panel to rotate. So I'm thinking about servo. So that would make it a little bit more awesome, I think. So let's see, okay, like this. No, I just, yeah, I can rotate, it just looks but ugly. Okay, no. Do I have a more flatter servo? Something like, uh, let's see, that one, F12. Oh, that actually looks like it could work. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now we're talking. Alright, and I might want to actually sink it in a little bit. So, let's just adjust the angle. Minus 90 to plus 90. Although, I think it should be more like minus and plus 45, to be honest. It doesn't really need the 90. Okay, let's just sink it a little bit in. Oh, there we go. Now, you almost don't see it, but you can still click it to get control. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. There we go. Another one, and I'm just gonna sing that one in as little as possible. Yes, good. Now we're coming to the final look. Look, I think it looks pretty, pretty decent. All right, so now what we need is we need for these two modules the ability to come by themselves. And that's gonna be a little bit tricky, but let's see if we can do it. Okay, so first we wanna put a probe core because it's gonna be remote controlled. Who knows, maybe it will be there, there will be a pilot as well. Let's put another two batteries, one SAS unit. Oh, we have two SAS units. Maybe we don't need an SAS unit there, but we could actually use an RCS tank instead. Okay, there we go. That will also make it a little bit more symmetrical from that perspective. Then I want to be putting the RCS thrusters on all sides. There we go, four here, another four over here. Okay, and then we want to take care of this side as well. Here I'm going to be putting another set of these fellas. So let's see, maybe we can distribute it. You two go here, good. The tank, I actually might transfer to one of the sides and to another, good. The SAS module is here. Okay, that looks actually pretty nice, uh, if I dare say so myself. All right, I need a probe core, which I'm going to stick on that end. And uh, I think I need a small antennas, just so they can communicate to each other. I mean, it's more for the looks than any, anything else, but, you know, functionality is also kind of important. I actually don't need an SAS module here, because I already have one on the other side. Okay, so now... That is the, is, as it looks, assemble. Let's put action groups. We put all the solar panels on one group. Then we put nine, we're gonna put the radiators. Good. And then I'm thinking eight, we're gonna put the rotatatrons. So that actually those can rotate, okay. Let's fold these, let's put some lighting because, I mean, lighting is important for the mood and everything, you know. So let's put it that one, hold on. Alright, there we go, look at it, amazing, 
Awesome. Right. <clears throat> Let's put then uh, what, what else do we have? We have a small reflectors that will actually illuminate all this. All right, I'm gonna actually put it somewhere over here on the, on the back end side because they want to be illuminating this structure. So, you know, nothing like when you're working in the lab, nothing like a big giant reflector sticking right in your face. I mean, it's just amazing, right? All right, I'm gonna angle them ever so slightly. All right, that looks pretty nice, I would say. All right, then we have the dome lights. And I'm actually thinking I'm gonna even color the dome lights. We're gonna color the left to be red, the right to be green. <clears throat> Just a little bit for that, you know, ambiance. All right, the other one, we're gonna put another light over there and yeah. All right, now that being said, let's put these on the in action group, which we are never gonna use again, of course, because reasons. Extend the antenna. There we go. Beautiful. We put a low traverse rate on the motor so when we engage the action group they will can just slightly tilt there and back again. A solar panel tail by Grumforks. Yeah. All right. So, uh, let's see. We've got these, we've got these. I think everything is more or less set. Now what I want to be doing is I want to be placing that into a pack packageable module. So yeah, now we're gonna save it as packed. So this module will going on the top end side and you will be launching at 90 degrees. So I think that's actually launchable. Whether you believe me or not, time will tell. All right, so let's see. Uh, auto strut heavy ever I have to auto strut everything because well you know when it's <laughs> strutted it's not gonna wo wobble like wet noodles so yeah right okay let's see what do we have here now how to get this one to fly well yeah I'm glad you asked let's switch the editor we're gonna put it like that it's gonna be launching vertical and uh, yeah, now how to get this structure? I was thinking to having two side, two side gigantic boosters, but I'm actually thinking I'm gonna go with fairing. And what better way to hold this entire structure than a tiny 6.06 uh, .06 meter radial um, stack separator. And on top of it, just a metric crap load of SAS and a big ass fairing. What could possibly go wrong? All right, let's put here an antenna. We might need it for controlling the craft. There we go. All right. So, time for the fairing. I need a big ass. I was thinking first initially that we put a tank here with an engine. And that actually gives me what? Ah, that's not good enough. Oh. 1000 I need bigger Delta V with a little bit more panache when it comes to thrust to weight okay so let's see what do we got I'm actually gonna put a fairing and I, by fairing I mean a big ass fairing okay let's build it there we go there we go yes unless you know how to launch things you you might as well be building a huge ass fairing I mean because that works always all right so I want the sides to be four, I want the clamshell deploy, of course. <clears throat> and now, let's just put two big SAS units. Oh, I need to recreate the fairing, oh, don't I? Okay, let's just enlarge it a little bit and come on, like this. Looks good enough to me. These two SAS units should keep it stable. Now, now we put a big ass booster on top of it and I don't think I have a large enough engine for that so i'm thinking i'm gonna go in with a thrust plate and thrust plate i'm gonna put like six nodes because well six plus one yeah so which engines i'm gonna place skippers ah oh, they look kind of nice and how much thrust weight of one point and delta v of three thousand i mean I'm, that's actually pretty good i think i'm gonna go with that one so, all right, <clears throat> then we want to put in a big, you know, Saturn V look tank and then let's put the Mastodon engines. All 
right? And that gives us a 0.91 thrust to weight. So if we get it high enough, it won't matter ultimately. So I just want to put like four huge Clydesdale boosters and then uh, I'm thinking it's probably gonna look good. Right. So, I mean, you know, a huge air station in just single launch. I mean, that's the way we like to do things. All right, uh, 1.38 thrust to weight. I, I, I think it looks good, but I think maybe, maybe like this would be better. Yeah, 1.45. To be honest, I think that, that, that looks much better. All right, so. Uh, wait, it's too high? Oh, I don't have the mod for extending, so I'm gonna just go with, roll with this one. All right, yeah, point well taken, okay. <clears throat> you cannot apparently big, uh, you know, Starship look size vehicles when you're building this, so fine. Okay, tailplane, yeah, that just looks weird. I'm gonna go with the regular fins, where are my regular, you know, tailplane fins, hold on. There we go. I want to make sure that those are, you know, aerodynamically stable. That's kind of important. And then I want to be putting, yeah, these holders. So good. Launch clamps, good. I want to make sure that everything is in the right stage. I want to make sure I strut this thing. I mean, you never know. I did auto strut things, but I don't trust myself. So let's see. Separatron, one, two, one, and two. And I think I just want to place them all in the same stage. When we decouple the boosters, we want Separatrons to fire and everything should be perfect. Right, three. Okay, let's put in some Kerbals. Well, I think it should be enough. I mean, we want to launch with the full crew, so I want to have pilots, engineers, scientists, whatever. Just cram it full with everything. Yeah, okay, come on. And I'm gonna modify a little bit the looks. Uh, I'm going with, you know, pilots one type, engineers other, and just to make fun of it, so yeah. Okay, so we jam-packed it with everybody, so three, let's go. Everything looks nominal, beautiful. Just making sure it's taking its sweet ascent. And I'm gonna go with a little bit steeper ascent because if you remember, literally everything is dependent and connected to this tiny, tiny, tiny 0 0.72, 0 0.625, um, you know, stack separator. And that's holding the whole structure together with the rocket. So I'm a little bit worried about my SAS units, you know, dancing all over the place, but I guess that will do fine. As long as I don't overthrottle and uh, go completely nuts, it, it should be okay. It is a little bit noodle wobbly, but uh, we can make it work. Alright, just making gentle adjustments so it's not dancing all over the place. All right, 100 by 100 kilometer with, this is our standard transfer, what we do every time. Okay, uh, ooh, 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 we have to burn into one. Okay, let's burn gently, which will make sure that we, engines make sure that we are corrected and then full throttle. Yeah, there we go. We need to ditch the stage. There we go. And then fire a new one. There we go, looks awesome. All right. And I want to be ditching the fairing sooner rather than later because it's gonna affect my, you know, Delta V to an extent. So maybe it's good that we just dump it. Good. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it was a big... And look at it dance now. Dance, dance. All right. <laughs> yeah, and a little bit more lighting. Immediately you have a disco. Right. All right. The burn should be... 100 meters per second more. Let's see if we can endure that. Okay, good. Right, so, so far so good. Now for the next stage, which is basically transfer to do. Now we have a total of 2.6, 2603 in the 
tank and that should be I hopefully more than enough the only thing that I really want is to a little bit I don't want to with the current orbit I want to circularize it because this is not a good orbit so let's just make sure that we correct our orbit so it's 122 by 122 point the craft maneuver prograde followed by a brief burn that will make sure that we get everywhere we need to go Right. Getting to the appropriate position. All right. So <clears throat> let's see. We say we're going to do with the return. Okay. Okay. Now we're at 122 by 122. So let's create the maneuver node and wait for the transfer window when it happens. Okay, the total burn is going to be 1,015 meters per second, and we're going to make sure we have Duna Select as our target of choice. There we go. Okay, and now we have come to the maneuver node burn. It's going to be a burn of 1,015, and it's going to be happening in 45 seconds. Twenty. Five, four, three, two, one, and burn. Once again, rock and roll all over the place. Look at it go. Two hundred more meters per second to burn. And soon enough, we're going to get an ejection. We have it. Uh, and oh, and we even managed to hit the periapsis. Amazing. Okay, so we'll have, we're going to have a minor correction burn somewhere midway just to make sure that we correct our Duna periapsis. But after that, it will be perfect. Let's see, at the ascending node, we just want to make a tiny, tiny correction to make sure that correct it. And I think it's going to be a really, really minuscule one for that matter. But yeah. All right, making corrections. There we go. Putting down perhaps wrong side, wrong side. Okay. 184. That looks good enough to me. I, I'm not going to tweak it a lot more than that because I think that will be just right. Okay, let's create an alarm with a maneuver node. And we will leave the sphere of influence of our home planet. So let's make a nice selfie while we're doing so. All right. Okay, guys, screenshot time and go for the party. Beautiful. There goes Jumun just whizzing by as we leave the sphere of influence. Beautiful. Then we have another correction. Okay, so the next maneuver node is going to be in a couple of hours. It's a tiny correction burn of 14.3 meters per second, which is the task is to bring the Duna periapsis from all the way from a couple of million meters to 180 kilometers. So it's a radial, I think, sorry, not radial, it's an anti-normal burn. There we go. And it's going to happen in 40 seconds-ish. Five, four, three, two, one, and let's burn. Bringing down the Duna Perepsis. Oop, and it brought it 200 kilometers, but polar. I wanted equatorial. Okay, time for minor corrections. And I'm gonna do those using the RCS. The problem is that the SAS is on and it's fighting me a little bit. So I'm gonna do it incrementally. I'm actually doing the RCS and pressing, you know, I, K, I, L, H, and all, the, all around until I get the desired orbit right with that things fixed now let's go into the duna sphere of influence for that glorious incoming shots oh 
Okay, now we're in the Duna Sphere of Influence. The periapsis is desirable, so what I wanted to do, I wanted to make a maneuver burn at the periapsis that will be performing the orbital insertion and inserting this craft into a stable orbit around Duna at the altitude of approximately 160-ish kilometers, more or less. I mean, we don't need to be that precise, so let's create a, an alarm. And normally, guys, I sometimes create alarms, but uh, when I'm recording, when I'm actually doing this, I'm actually making the alarm so you guys get it to enjoy the cinematic transitions. So basically, it reminds me, you know, knocks me on the, my shoulder and say, you know, ground forks, you should really start to think about burning. So yeah, there's that. Okay, we have Duna in the background. Our craft is stable, po positioned for a nice burn. Okay, run the cinematics. There we go, Duna looking so beautiful, hitting the time accelerator just right, so that we have this nice Duna rise and arrival, which we all know and love. I don't know, I mean, these moments for me never get old in the KSP. It's reasons why after, you know, 12 years or what was it, 10 years of actually playing KSP, I still play it and I still enjoy the heck out of it. All right, and I cannot wait until KSP2 comes because that one is gonna be epic. Right, okay, we are closing to our periapsis and as you can see, the alarm nicely halted the time and reminded me, you know, Groundforks, you should really start about thinking about the burn. The burn is a 667 meters per second. We have 1,552 in the tank, so we have more than enough to, you know, not worry about anything. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, we are doing a little bit of rock and roll, you know, wobble, 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 wobble. And that usually happens when you're using a very, very huge push stage to push a huge uh, station and by holding it on a half a meter, you know, fairing. So yeah, that happens. Right, okay, we are at, I would say this is a nice 180 by 150, we might actually increase it a little bit, so it's 180 by 180 kilometer orbit, we want to, so it's as circular as possible, you never know, you might need it for transfers, you might need it for science, but, I mean, we are just putting it for the kicks, and of course, because we can, right, so... <clears throat> Now we are coming to the important parts, and that is actually making sure that we time warp, we put it in the correct orbit, and then we will be assembling it. As mentioned, this is basically a tutorial how to build it, put it there, and then basically assemble it and put them together. All right. So, <clears throat> I have decided rather than to use the engine, I have decided to use my RCS thrusters, mainly because I have metric crap ton of RCS in the tank and also the fact that I can actually enjoy. There we go. 180 by 180 orbit. We will move away from the main tank, which is kind of nice. I want to make sure if I can put this alignment. I was thinking if I could rotate this by 90 degrees, but apparently you can just fix the uh, alignment angle in tiny amounts. So, okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to detach those two components, top and bottom, and assemble it into a final structure. But I'm going to do that on the sunny side of Duna, so I'm just going to wait until we come out of Duna's shadow. And while we have the connectivity to the KSC, like we have now, for example, and make sure that I align the craft orbit prograde, rotate it ever so gently, okay, something like that because we are supposed to have the cupola module <coughs> pointing normal downward, so we get a nice views of Duna. Right. <clears throat> I'm not del deliberately putting it radially inwards, but let's see. Um, the thing is, now I will be detaching the bottom module, and I would very much like to have a pilot inside. So let's see. Verdus Kerman, you are what? You are engineer. Okay, uh, I need a pilot to pilot this. Technically, maybe I don't, but let's put you here on the sides, just for, you know, fidelity's sake. 
Debalb and Mazor. So let's see who is the pilot. Debalb, you are the pilot. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you lady go in there and oop, missed it by a little. Okay, grab, board, good. Verdus, you get back into the lab and enjoy the rest of the show while our capable pilot makes sure that we are... Okay, undock. There we go. Now we only need to do a minor rotation by 90 degrees and redock and then it will be fine. However, uh, I'm worried that if I'm too close, we might need to... We won't connect. Yeah, it won't connect. Okay, tell you what, go a little bit further. I'm gonna change the control point. I'm gonna reset the control point, set the unset target, and now we should be able to redock. Okay, so there we go. Ever so gently. Careful, and there we go. Okay, that's not a perfect angle. Can you just adjust the alignment angle, please? Thank you. That is what it's there for. I mean, short shrivel and to the left. Yeah, well, no. I'm not gonna com I'm not gonna comment on that. All right, <clears throat> tell you what, I'm gonna now and decouple the rest alignment angle. I can fix this. Now, let's connect this bad boy. So this one will be remote controlled with the Kerbals inside. That's always fun. They like to you know engage in various shenanigans. Okay, we have disconnected. I'm just making sure that the craft is stabilized. It is. Good. There we go. And now we control it from the docking port and we set the target to the docking port where it's supposed to dock. And then let's connect it. The good thing with this space station is we packed everything in one go. I mean, <clears throat> so it's very, very handy that we have placed everything in one go, so we didn't need to worry about, you know, orbital rendezvous, docking. We're just performing the docking rather than an orbital rendezvous and whatnot. So, yeah, that's very, very simple procedure here. Okay, and connected. There we go, look at it, how beautiful it looks, and apparently it's a little bit crooked, but I guess I'll have to live with that, that's fine. Let's align it for some pretty pictures and enjoy the show, look at them, all of our Kerbals are, they are just so dang happy, alright. Turning the solar panels to a target angle, so it looks a little bit more, you know, like the like, like our ISS. There we go. Look at it go. Beautiful. So, <clears throat> yeah, as I said, we were able to dock this without uh, the orbital rendezvous. And I know orbital rendezvous is a problem for a lot of players. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to post the the next video I want you to watch in the right upper end right hand side is an orb orbital rendezvous tutorial that I have made just for you. So take a look at it and enjoy and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. This is Gromforks signing off.